Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We are so glad you joined us. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. You know, preterm births, it's a medical condition that affects nearly half a million pregnant it's mothers. It's hard to believe. I know, and their newborns every single year. Well, today, Julie, great news on how to manage and cope. That's good. And we'll also look at some of the latest products when it comes to whole body cleansing, which is also good, too. Not partial? No, whole. Got it. Okay. The Balancing Act starts right now. Each year in the U.S., nearly one in nine babies are born preterm, meaning less than 37 weeks of pregnancy or more than three weeks prior to the expected due date. That's nearly half a million babies every year born too early in this country. Here to discuss preterm birth and provide guidance to women who may be at risk for preterm birth is Dr. Aaron Deutsch from Boynton Beach, Florida, who is a specialist in maternal fetal medicine. Also, coming up a little bit later, we're going to meet two moms, very special ladies, who are going to share their personal experiences delivering a baby prematurely. Good morning. Thank you for having me. No, Appreciate thanks for being here. I think this is important. And you know, I'm the first one to say my, both my daughters were born two weeks early. And I got to tell you, I was frightened, I was scared, and I'll touch upon that a little bit later, but I can relate to preterm birth. But let's first talk about sure. it. What is it? So first off, preterm birth, we have to understand what term birth is. And when a woman's given her due date of 40 weeks gestational age is full term, term is considered 37 to 40 weeks. So if a woman delivers earlier than 37 weeks, that's preterm. And the reason why it's so important is preterm birth is the leading cause of neonatal death also associated with a high risk of medical complications and there's a financial impact on the healthcare system with that as well. And what most people don't realize is how common preterm birth is. It occurs in almost 12% of all pregnancies. That high? Yes, absolutely. And why is that? Well, nobody knows for nobody sure, knows. of course, and uh, there's multiple risk factors that can go into that as well. So the goal is 40 weeks or full term. So what can happen, doctor, when a baby's delivered preterm? Well, first off, you're absolutely right, and that's what I think women should focus on is a goal of 39 to 40 weeks, and there's multiple medical studies that show that babies born after 39 weeks have the best outcomes. Okay. But if a baby is born premature, there's a host of medical problems associated with that. Essentially, every organ system in the baby can be adversely affected. Now, the earlier a baby delivers, the worse the risks and the longer term problems, but anything from the brain, the lungs, the intestines, wow. infections, long stays in the hospital. So the goal is to try to stay pregnant as long as possible to your due date to minimize these risks. So let's say right now, you know, I'm sure we have so many women out there who are pregnant and they wonder, well, are there any risk factors that I should be aware of? Are there? Absolutely. Now, many preterm births are unexpected and can't plan for, but there are specific risk factors that are associated with a higher risk of preterm birth. And one of the most important things for all pregnant ladies is to establish their prenatal care early with their health care provider, get in with them, have a discussion about their medical history, their obstetric history, to find out if they have any of these risk factors. And one of the biggest ones would be having delivered a baby preterm previously. Okay. So having had a baby preterm puts you in about a 15 to 30 percent risk of having that recur in the next Again. pregnancy. If you've had two babies preterm in a row, your risk can be as high as 60% in the next pregnancy. Wow. So very high. And that's probably your biggest risk factor. Other risk factors, things like multiple gestations, which would be twins or triplets, um, cervical problems, a short cervix, certain medical complications, and then there's socioeconomic factors that kind of play into it also. Now, I got to tell you, when it does happen, when there is a preterm birth, I've seen such progress, remarkable progress, yeah. especially in the neonatal intensive care unit. Right. Let's talk about that progress today. Sure. And I would say some of the biggest accomplishments in the medical field have been caring for these premature babies. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's true, babies are born at earlier gestational ages, surviving longer than they ever had before. And, and the capabilities in the neonatal intensive care have improved to the point that the medical problems are much less now. I would say the key point, though, is there are still problems, even now with the capabilities that they have. And some of these can be lifelong. So the goal would be to have the baby maturing inside in the uterus, getting bigger, developing, 
close to that due date after 39 weeks to minimize any risk of having to use the great facilities in a neonatal intensive care unit. So quick question here, in your opinion, do many pregnant moms know that their baby's growth and development continues even after the latter part of their pregnancy? Yeah, I would say most people tend to have a general appreciation okay. that it's better to stay pregnant as long as possible, but I think what's underestimated is the risks even having a baby several weeks early and the impact that can have. Now. Also importantly, there are certain indications where babies are purposely delivered preterm, and that would be called an indicated preterm birth, where there's a medical complication, mom has diabetes or high blood pressure, there's a problem with the growth or development of the baby, a placental problem. These rare instances, we would prefer to deliver a baby preterm. But aside from these occurrences, the goal for every woman should be getting to that 39, 40 week time frame. And you just hit it with me. What happened to me was my heart rate shot up, Samantha's heart rate shot up, and the doctor said we gotta go in. And that's why they delivered her. All right, stay right there, doctor, because when we come back, we're gonna have two moms and they're gonna share their personal story with delivering their child preterm. You don't wanna miss it. Welcome back. Joining me now are two moms, Kate and Lynn, both mothers of children born prematurely, and adding his medical expertise to our discussion this morning, Dr. Aaron Deutsch, a maternal fetal medicine specialist. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so Good much morning. for joining me. Kate, let me start with you. I know your son Gabriel was born five weeks early. Tell me about that. Yes, um, I had a normal pregnancy up until uh, 34 weeks. My water broke. Wow. Totally unexpectedly. Um, and I was admitted to the hospital and had him eight days later at 35 weeks, which is five weeks too early. Um, and I was totally unprepared for that. I didn't know anything about it. And my expectations were, were really kind of shattered as far as how my delivery was gonna go. I was expecting a really joyful time and it was really serious. Um, I didn't even get to hold him right away. <sighs> after he was born, they kind of whisked him away and, and the extra NICU doctors had to, to check him out, make sure and he I was all right. And I can only imagine at that moment, your fear and just wondering, now what? Holding my breath, yeah. Oh my gosh, Lynn, tell me your story, please, with your son, Lamar, right? Yes, Lamar. When I was pregnant with Lamar, I went to the doctor for my regular visit and I was telling her about these pains I were, was experiencing and she told me, no, those are contractions. So she sent me over to labor and delivery and I got a little excited seeing the little crib in the room with me and I thought, my son is gonna come early, this is a great thing. But then she warned me that if he was born this early, he would end, it, end up going to NICU. Eventually he was born four weeks too early. Doctor, I'm hearing these two stories. They're quite common, typical circumstances? A absolutely, things that a uh, typical obstetrician would deal with on a daily or weekly basis is stories just like these. And you can see how it really kind of turns the life of the family upside down. Um, so certainly things that commonly happen here and having a preterm birth can really uh, change things. Kate, I, I was telling the doctor earlier, I don't know if you heard, but it, my children came two weeks early. For me, that was just, I, I was a wreck. I can't, tell me about your emotions at that moment. It was definitely scary for me. Uh, once I kind of was clued into, this is a serious situation, um, I was just totally unprepared for that emotion. I wasn't expecting that at all. But so much progress in the hospitals today and everything worked out well. Yes, yes. My son didn't have to spend any time in the NICU, which my husband and I were so oh, grateful for. Goodness. And Lynn, your emotions at that moment when they told you Lamar is coming? When Lamar got here, he seemed perfectly fine and I was very excited. I thought I would be able to take him home. But while I was in recovery, he started having issues holding his temperature and being four weeks too early, he wasn't able to suck quite well. So he ended up spending 19 days in the NICU. It was really challenging. We were excited to take him home, but instead had to spend all that time in the hospital. And it was, you know, not the experience that you want for your first child. And doctor, let's be honest. I mean, having a child is stressful. And after you deliver, there's so many changes in the body. I, I can only imagine when you have a preemie, there, it's, it's even more. Absolutely, certainly. A, a full-term healthy newborn is stressful enough. Exactly. And then dealing with the questions of the health of your baby, the consequences of having a baby preterm, visiting your baby in the hospital rather than coming home with you. So huge, huge stressors, not to mention a financial impact. Medical bills add up of having a baby in the NICU. And, People don't realize the, the stress that that could have on the family, certainly. Well, ladies, thank you so much for sharing your story. I am so glad both children are doing fine and they're beautiful and wonderful. And we're going to have more? 
We're going to have more kids? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Doctor, any closing thoughts for anybody out there who could be, you know, carrying a child right now, thinking of having one? I, I would say the first thing, which I mentioned previously, is most importantly is getting in early to see your health care provider, determining if you have risk factors for preterm birth, particularly if you've had a prior baby born preterm the importance of letting them know. And then the other thing which I think is really important is the signs and symptoms of preterm labor, which certainly can lead to preterm birth. So if a woman's having contractions, bleeding, leaking water like her water broke, let your health care provider know early to get in to be evaluated. Thank you so much for your time, Doctor. Thanks for having Great me. information. And ladies, again, God bless you and your children. Thank you. Thank you. And if you're pregnant or planning on becoming or know someone who is, you can visit us at thebalancingact.com for additional information on today's topic. And get social as always. Share with us your thoughts, concerns, or experiences. Log on to Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act fans. Even if you haven't done one, chances are you know folks who have, and it's gaining in popularity, and for good reason. We're talking about an intestinal cleanse. Many swear by it, but some of us are simply uninformed to its benefits. And here to clear it all up, and the mystery behind it, and educate us on why cleansing can be a very vital part of our overall health, is Jeff Van Heck, National Sales Manager for a company called Yerba Prima, a consumer and a company dedicated to great intestinal health. So glad to have you in the studio. You can educate me as well this morning. Thank you, Julie. Pleasure to be here. Great to have you. All right, Jeff, let's start with the big picture. And what exactly is a cleanse and what occurs during a cleanse? Well, the fact is that our environment has become contaminated as a result of the overproduction of chemical compounds. Mm -hmm. These chemical compounds can be found in everything from our food supply to our water and even in the air we breathe. Typically, uh, they can be found as herbicides, pesticides, heavy metal toxins like mercury, even plasticizers commonly found in water bottles and carpet. Wow. Yeah. Once in the system, these chemical compounds are toxic and they wreak havoc in the body. So it's very, very difficult to remove them. Whole body cleansing is, is really the most effective way to be able to do that, and it'll do it through all seven channels of elimination. The bowels, the kidneys, the lungs, the skin, the lymphatic system, along with the blood and the liver. Wow, that's, uh, that's intense, but amazing that it can do all that. Yeah. And can you do this right at home? You can do it in the comfort and convenience of your own home. It's very gentle. It won't have any harmful or unwanted side effects. Um, it's a 30-day supply, uh, very easy to use, and we're not asking anyone to uh, do any, make any drastic changes to their lifestyle. Just uh, use the product and go about your daily life. I know you've brought some products to our kitchen. They're specifically formulated for women, and tell us what we've got here. Well, we have our Women's Renew Whole Body Cleanse System. Okay. Yerba Prima is the only company that manufactures a whole whole body cleanse system for both male and female body types. The difference between the two is that we've added support nutrients for the male and female body types. Okay. So the Women's Renew contains chase tree berry and dong quai, which are two very good female tonic herbs. We've also added B vitamins for energy. In addition to that, we have our Herbal Guard formula, which okay. is actually our anti-parasite formula. This has trifala, black walnut holes, cloves, and ginger, and it'll help to aid the body in removing uh, any parasites. And then finally, we have our fiber component, which is the Prima Cleanse formula. This has all five different types of fiber, selenium, magnesium, and calcium to help strengthen and rebuild the lining of the colon, FOS, or fructal oligosaccharides, wow. <laughs> to feed and multiply the good bacteria, and some of our Great Plains Bentonite, which is a very powerful detoxifier, and it will aid in removing heavy metal toxins, herbicides, and pesticides. So very complete, very gentle, 30-day supply. And why should women be careful about what type of whole body cleanse they're using? A lot of cleanse systems on the market today contain harsh stimulant laxatives, mm. which can create a what we refer to as a laxative dependency, which actually shuts the body's own ability down to evacuate or eliminate. So you want to make sure you're very careful as far as what type of cleanse you're using. And a lot of others actually require a strict fasting regimen, which can also be very unsafe. So you always want to use a product that's natural, take, try and take a fiber approach when you can, 
and use it over a longer period of time to work naturally with your body. Good advice. Your product literature states that Yerba Prima pioneered the use of fiber and whole body cleansing. Can you explain that a little bit? Yes, we, uh, we were actually the first company in the natural foods industry 35 years ago to have a whole body cleanse. There were a lot of other companies in the industry that had standalone herbal ingredients or fiber components, but none were really putting it all in one kit, yeah. addressing all avenues of the elimination cycle. Um, we also were the first company to launch a full line of dietary fiber supplements and blends containing no artificial sweeteners, binders, or fillers, wow. ensuring that our customers got the you know, highest quality, cleanest product available. You know, fiber we hear is so great for weight loss. And, and really, how much weight are we talking about with women and this product and using this cleanse? Well, it is, it's true. Fiber is very good at, at uh, aiding in weight loss, um, and it varies by individual. Uh, but what fiber does is it helps to create a feeling of satiety, so you feel fuller longer. Mm -hmm. It also helps to promote good digestion and helps to feed up food transit time. So it's very, very effective for weight loss. And again, it varies by individual. There's a lot of different factors that play a role in that. And it can be, uh, you know, physical activity, eating habits, uh, a woman's body chemistry. Sure. But one thing for sure is you're definitely, fiber and cleansing is definitely good for helping to lose you're weight. You're going to lose weight. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. One final question. Where can our viewers find this? You can find our products at any health food store throughout the country and a lot of these specialty grocery stores that have health food sets. Or you can find us online at yerbaprima.com. Thanks so much for coming in. Great information. Thanks so much for having me here, Julie. All right. If you'd like to come clean and learn more, you can also visit us at thebalancingact.com or share with us your reasons why you want to cleanse. Log on to Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act Fans. Well, it's almost time to start that day, so I hope you make it a great one. Remember to check out our website, thebalancingact.com, so you can find lots more information right there for you. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. Follow us, like us, tweet us. <laughs> Be social, right? Yes. <laughs> Until next time, remember, find your balance.